Hello. Making GP in RuneScape can be hard sometimes, especially if you're not maxed out. This is because you're limited on the PVM content that you can do, which essentially isolates you from really good loot tables. I know what you're going to say. PVM is not the only way of making money in RuneScape, but I have to be honest, I have a lot more fun hitting a boss than hitting a rock. Everyone wants to jump in and immediately farm some of the most expensive items. But you have to be real with ourselves and consider the stats that we currently have and our skill. I really thought this through, compared the options and came to conclusion that doing wildy content would be the most profitable way for a low to mid level account to get some starting cash. If we take a look at some of these encounters, for example one of the most popular one being the Barrows Brothers, you'll quickly notice that the drop chances are not as good, especially if you consider the items are worth anywhere from 100k to 3 mil per piece. Of course you can roll for 7 different pieces in the chest, but chances of that happening are... Hey. Pretty, pretty slim. A good encounter which requires minimal gear would be one of the Daggerant bosses which has a pretty good chance of dropping a Berserker ring. There are some really good guides out there on how to isolate him from other bosses and basically AFK farm him until you run out of supplies. I was really spooned there and actually got 3 Berserker rings in 172 kills so take this with a grain of salt, it's not going to happen to everyone. The wieldy bosses I'm referring to are Calarion and Arteo. They are really easy to kill and can drop some pretty good pieces such as Void Waker Blade, Void Waker Hilt and Ring of the Gods. Best thing about wilderness is you can actually bring a looting bag which gives you an additional 28 spaces in the inventory, which is extremely helpful. You can stay longer and even if you don't get a crazy drop, you can quickly farm some goodies granted all the extra space you have. Only requirement here is to have the medium wilderness diary completed. People usually avoid wilderness because it's swarming with PKers and that's because PVMers are an easy prey. If you don't know anything about PK, you're probably not going to show much resistance, which is great for them. As you can see, I also didn't show any resistance at the time because I didn't know what the f*** was I supposed to do. However, if you're there to kill a boss, get some decent loot and teleport away. You're not going to get skull, which means you're basically risking nothing. And when I say nothing, I'm talking about a 100k GP risk. Yeah, you're going to encounter a PK eventually, but it shouldn't discourage you from doing wildy stuff. You just need to figure out the logistics. Let's start off with Calvarion and the gear that I use to farm the boss, covering both budget and preferred options. Calvarion is weak to crush, which means the weapon of your choice is obviously going to be a crush based weapon. The strongest, cheapest weapon in this tier would be a Seracne Schedule. This weapon doesn't have any special or passive effects, but it costs a measly 250k GP. GP, which should be affordable to everyone. As far as the other gear is concerned, I rolled an Ezzy Helm, Fire Cape, Glory Amulet for the TP, Blessing for extra prayer, Black Dragon Hide, Dragon Defender, Combat Bracelet and some climbing boots for the extra strength bonus. As you can see here, the risk is only 100k and trust me, it pays off. The preferred weapon here is Ursin Chain Mace. It has a little higher stats than the Kajal, but most importantly, it has a passive effect which only works in Wilderness and what it does is, it actually increases your accuracy and damage by whooping 50% while fighting NPCs in the Wilderness. Although it is a bit pricey, and it needs to be charged with Revenant Eater in order for the passive effect to work, it's definitely worth investing your GP into this maze. You're not going to lose it even if you die, but keep in mind that you lose all the Revenant Eater you've put into it. As far as the inventory goes, bring some stamina and combat potions, a couple of prayer restores and some food. Most importantly, bring your looting bag and if you don't have one, don't worry, it usually drops from the first boss kill. You wanna start off in the Ferris Enclave by using your Ring of Dueling. Run through the Eastern Gate and you'll notice an entrance just a little bit to the north. When you enter, you'll pay a fee of 50k up until you kill Calvarion 5 times and you won't have that fee anymore. You'd only have to pay that fee again if you die. There's also a peak option once you kill him 20 times, which essentially lets you know if anyone is in there fighting the boss just so you don't have to blindly hop worlds. Make sure that your looting bag is open, pop your potions and enter the crypt. He's going to immediately start throwing shit at you, so just try and get some distance at first and continue to move at all times. You don't have to pray against him, but keep your strength prayer on for extra damage. Calvarion has this lightning attack which always spawns one tile away from you, but you need to be two tiles away in order to not take damage. Here are some examples. Samples. At some point, he throws a special shield attack which you can easily recognize as there are a lot of little shadows on the ground, just move away from those. After you get him down below 50% HP, he will spawn two dogs which you need to protect melee against. They are pretty easy to kill, but you still need to keep track of Calvarion's lightning attacks. Rinse and repeat until you kill his first phase. Calvarion will then go berserk. Stay away from the lightnings around him. He will throw a shield bash right at the start of each phase. The yellow phase is literally the same as the first one, he just attacks a little bit faster. Drop him down to 50% HP, he will spawn dogs, heal the dogs, avoid stuff kill him. Before I show you the loot, I just wanna quickly show you why the Ursin Chain Mace is the preferred option at Calvarion. As you can see, you can one shot the dogs, which comes in really handy, and I mean, just look at this damage. 
It took me only 83 attempts to get the best drop from his loot table which I admit is a little bit lucky. I killed Calarian 251 times and the total value of my runs is 19 mil which is pretty decent considering it takes you 1 to 2 minutes to kill the boss. Now let's move on to the big cuddly bear boss called Artyo. This guy has a chance of dropping a Void Waker Hilt which is currently valued at around 36 mil. That's some pretty big loot right there, but it also makes it a hotspot for PKers as well. It's all a part of the process. I died to PKers a few times, but if you take all the runs into consideration, I'm definitely in a massive profit. This boss can be killed with both ranged and magic, and I'm going to show you both options, but I definitely prefer the ranged version. It's just a little bit more versatile in my opinion. As far as the magic gear goes, I was running the full mystic set with Major Arena 1 cape, a blessing, a curse captor, book of darkness and barrel's gloves, just like it's melee counterpart, the Curse Scepter also has a passive effect which increases magic accuracy and damage by 50% when fighting wilderness NPCs. As you can see, the total value of the gear is 2.5 mil which should be accessible to everyone. Our range setup is a bit more pricey because of the Web Weaver bow and Archer's Ring. Archer's Ring is not really necessary but you need the Web Weaver. It's a wild range weapon with 50% increased accuracy and damage in ranged when fighting wildy NPCs. Here that I used is the Archer's Helm, Major Arena 1 Cape, a Blessing, Black Dragon Hide, Web Weaver bow, Barrow's Gloves, Bloodbark Boots and Archer's ring. For this setup, you only need to keep in mind that you need to have zero or above magic accuracy in order to not miss your entangles, which is literally half the fight. This setup is worth around 18.5 mil, but if you leave out the ring, it comes down to around 14 mil. Just make sure that you have no more than 3 big items on you and you're basically risking nothing. Your inventory should contain runes for entangles, a couple of prayer pots, a stamina and a ranging pot, looting bag and some food. I didn't skill my magic level enough for entangles, so I used snare instead. The entrance fee works the same as for Calvarion and all other wilderness bosses. Once you enter the boss Room, you wanna immediately throw your rectangle and watch what the boss is about to throw at you. If it's a white ball, you wanna pray mage. If it's a white half moon, you wanna pray ranged. I'm mostly going to pray ranged as the white ball is his special. Keep your distance and throw the entangle whenever he starts walking again. Be careful. If he gets too close, he can melee you for up to 40 damage. At a third of his HP, Artie will spawn traps on the floor and will dispel any active entangles if he has any. So be careful and re-entangle him again. Also, watch out for the mage attack. If you stand on a trap, you're basically stuck for a couple of seconds, which will make Artie melee you straight in the face, you don't want that. There's a trick to this however, if you stand a tile next to the trap, you can basically walk over the trap without getting stuck, like so. This is really useful and it works with any bosses that have similar mechanics. Just keep your distance, entangle whenever you can and watch out for the mage attack. After a few runs, the tactics will sink in and you'll be grinding GP in no time. As you can see, it took me 365 kills to get the most valuable drop which is the Void Waker Hilt. This was by far my most valuable drop in RuneScape. I've done 366 Arteo kills which netted me a total of 53.1 mil which is really, really good if you ask me. The principle is basically the same with magic gear. Just try it out and see for yourself which style suits you better. Now, I remember what the PKers were doing to me while I was trying to do some honest runescape work. And it actually didn't look that hard to me, so I decided to give it a go. Yeah, I decided to become a hunter instead of constantly being the prey. I gave myself a goal of killing 100 PVMers at Calvarion and Artio to see if I can actually make more money than killing the bosses myself. So I looked up some videos on PKing and long story short, I didn't have enough magic stats to cast Teleblock and Entangle. So I spent all the money I earned in Wildy to power level my magic up to 81. Why 81? Well, there's a potion called Divine Magic Potion which boosts your magic level by 4 and I couldn't be asked to level my magic all the way up to 85, I just wanted some blood. So I bought a stack of these potions which are dirt cheap. As far as gear goes, for my magic switch I used mystic robes with zemi cloak and zemi staff so I can cast zemi flames. For my range switch I used black dragon hide with a rune crossbow and dragonstone bolts and lastly for my melee spec I used the dragon dagger. It was a complete mess right off the bat because I was so lost with all the gear switching and prayer switching but after a few attempts I kind of got the grip and I actually started killing people. The main premise was to pot up before going in, throw my teleblock first, then entangle until it hits and then just switch gear to confuse the opponent. And it actually worked. I've started racking up loot and it became a fun activity to do on the side. I am by no means good at this, but as I already said at the start of this video, most of the PVMers actually don't show any resistance and with just a little bit of effort you can actually take them down. Some of the kills were really juicy. I got a couple ones which netted me over 1 mil each. I also noticed that you never know what you can get, which is probably a big part of why so many people PK in the first place. So after finally getting 99 kills, I wanted to feel like one of those big PKers and bought a god sword finish my 100 kill with. I found my last victim, unfortunately it was an Iron Man but I couldn't care less. The TB was successful and I managed to entangle him on my first hit. His time was slowly ticking away and my god sword was itching for a spec. I wielded the Twihander and unleashed my spec on the poor guy. 
This was my 100 kill, so I went to see how much goop I earned from killing innocent PVMers. I have earned a total of 35 mil for killing 100 players. I'd say this is not bad at all, considering the risk and effort that went into this. Out of all 3 GP making methods, I have to say that killing PVMers was probably the most fun for me, because you have that player communication element and it just feels more alive. If we combine everything I was doing above, I made around 100 mil from these wilderness activities and I say that's extremely good for a low to mid level account. Let me know what you think about these methods and as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.